This is from 2020 and this is from a month ago. Do you want to know how I improved my skills in a short amount of time? Then this video is for you. Hey all, I'm Ariaba and I've been working in the art industry for the past seven years. But since I ever studied in art school, my art hasn't always been up to a certain standard. So what happened in my case was that I already had my shot at university by studying design, but then I discovered that I really wanted to pursue art and going back to school wasn't really gonna cut it for me, so I had to train by myself. So what's the secret? Drawing every day, it's simple. End of the video. Now jokes aside, what's simple in theory, in practice is a whole other thing. Ain't nobody got time for that! The truth is, you don't need to draw a masterpiece every day. Sometimes, if I'm really tired, I'll just take five minutes to do an horrible sketch just for ticking the box and say that I've done it. So let's look at my daily exercise and stick around till the end for four tips on how to include this in your day-to-day -day life. It's pretty simple. Every morning, before starting my work for the day, I'll just sit down for a few minutes, I'll choose a subject and I'll take as many reference photos as I can and I'll just sketch them. I always use reference photos. I think it's really important for the exercise and don't you dare considering it cheating. As I show in my full digital painting process, link up above, I still rely on them for my mood boards to find inspiration and checking on some of the complicated details. References help me to learn how to observe my subject and analyze it and to build a visual library. And this is the most important part of the exercise. Think about it this way. Our brain can process an insane amount of detail that we can see every day. And it's pretty much impossible to remember everything. You can remember things when you study them with a lot of repetition. So this is what this exercise is about. Practically speaking, I have a general idea on how to draw a cat, but I can't remember every detail. When I reach a point where I draw like thousands of cats, then I'm pretty sure I can draw a decent looking cat or at least a closer one. Anyway, I want these sketches to be quite loose. They gotta look bad, okay? Pretty art is for another time, this is an exercise. In my case, they are the first thing that I do in the morning, so I really don't wanna put pressure on myself and certainly I don't wanna go for a perfect line work. So it's nothing overly complicated and I'm not caring about details at all. And to avoid getting caught up in one of the sketches, I even time myself with only a few minutes per drawing. The timing really helps me to focus on the overall proportion of my subject and avoid staying too much on a single area. Drawing fast also really helps me to have more confidence in my lines and building muscle memory and speed. In fact, you can see that half of my sketches are not even finished. This is actually an exercise that I recommend to all my online students to start with because it helps in so many aspects. I try to post these sketches as often as possible and I invite people to do the same. You can follow me on my AG and my Twitter where I post them if you want to join me. Okay, there are so many benefits of consistency that I don't even know where to start. The reason I do this task every day and not just where I want to is very simple because it's freaking boring. If I were to do it whenever I feel like, it would be never. I would just draw things for fun and in my case it would always be fluffy cats. The problem is that improvement comes with a lot of repetition because practice makes perfect. I'm talking out of experience for so many things, like I tried several times to learn piano and I was never consistent with it and I gave up. They say to become a master at something, it requires 10,000 hours. So my conclusion to myself was, you want to improve? Draw every single day. Put in the hours, it's that simple. These days, for example, I'm fully focusing on portrait. I really want to improve my anatomy skills, so patiently, every day for 30 minutes, I just sit down and sketch heads. Actually, every free time that I have, I'm actually drawing heads. It's like I'm obsessed. And anyway, constantly sketching really promotes creativity for me and helps me with art block and consistency. It makes me explore new subjects. Or some other times, I might like particularly one of my sketches and I might decide to come back and develop it further. Another reason this is an amazing habit is because sometimes action comes before motivation. Very often when I spend too much time thinking about what I want to draw, I end up with paralysis analysis and I end up dropping it. If I start doing instead, I break the ice immediately. Also having something to do before jumping directly into work really helps me to turn my brain on. I used to procrastinate a lot over emails before this. Okay, this is all and well, but now four tips on how to actually put this into practice. First one, you gotta choose the right tool. And what I mean with the right tool, I mean the most convenient tool for you. As I said, I'm lazy. There's no way I'm making this feel like work. 
otherwise I would end up like never doing it. So for finding my references, I use a completely free online tool called Line of Action. They have a wide library of photos to slide. The tool does literally everything for you, slides the photos with a timer, so you don't have to lift a finger. It's really cool and I really recommend to check it out. I'm not sponsored by them, I just freaking love the tool. Or I use the Oli Graylor references, Pinterest. I have boards for pretty much everything that comes to mind. Now about the tool for drawing, one key to success is being comfortable. When I'm working for really polished stuff, like especially for clients, I have to adapt to the right tool for the job. And often enough, this tool is not my favorite. Yes, I'm talking to you, Photoshop. But when I'm sketching in the morning, I'm always drawing on my iPad. Definitely my favorite tool. This has a massive impact in keeping my consistency up because no one wants to do stuff if it's uncomfortable. By the way, these sketches don't have to be digital, even if you want to pursue digital art. I personally hate drawing traditionally because it's completely out of my comfort zone. I will find myself trying to zoom on a page every time. But if you feel like doing this on a sketchbook, go for that. But I just want to clarify, there's no need to buy expensive equipment. You can just start with a cheap sketchbook and pencil. When I started, I remember that I used to draw on random paper that I used to find around the house. And also, there are a bunch of tweaks that you can adopt to make your life easier. For example, I bought a nice matte cover for my iPad, so it feels a little bit more like paper and it's less slippery. I also bought a nice rigid stand. One of those where you can like put some weight to it, then it never bends. And I'm really glad I did, it's great. It keeps my posture up. My choice on the software is Procreate. It quickly became my favorite painting app, but there's plenty of choice out there. Sometimes I find myself using my Cintiq 16 inches with Krita, and Krita is a free open source painting software that I really, really recommend. It has some really nice brushes. Second tip, go in with the right mindset. Your mindset matters so much. The most common reason why people stop being consistent with daily practice is because they pressure themselves in wanting to draw something good looking. We are all used to see the best artwork online all the time and obviously that motivates us to try to achieve more and wanting to produce more nice art. But wanting to do pretty stuff all the time can lead you to frustration, burnout and art blocks. Well, I solve this problem by not caring about the result at all. I don't need to share these drawings. I don't need other people to see them. These are just for me and me only. So even if they turn out bad, who cares? The important thing for me is just to show up. Let me show all the crap that I make for exercising. There's a whole folder on my iPad dedicated just to that. And as you can see, ton of these are not even finished. Allowing myself to fail and draw bad stuff is just what I needed for setting myself up for success, actually. Whenever I'm able to paint nice finished pieces, that's when I declare that all the work that I did with practice paid off. Anyway, with daily sketches, you can start with simple stuff. Don't put pressure on yourself. I usually recommend to start with organic simple stuff because it allows for a lot of room for mistakes, even though I know these are probably not the most exciting subjects. Another key for not setting yourself up for failure is to not overcommit. For me, this means that I'm doing my warm-up exercises from Monday to Friday and I don't even touch my Apple Pencil during weekends. Like, weekends for me are just for recharging and play video games, obviously. This is because I know my weekends can change a lot. I don't care about imposing myself something that I already know. I don't have the stability or the willpower to maintain. This helped me not to feel like a failure whenever I was not drawing during weekends. Also, don't forget to not be too harsh on yourself. If you skip a day, nothing happens. Tip number three, set different times for different purposes. Doing your exercises can help you improve really fast, but they're also tiring because learning can be quite tiring. We can't always be in a productive and learning mood. We are not machines, are we? It's fine to switch to a more convenient task when you are in a different mood or you're tired. And that's why I really want to separate time for practice and for making pretty art. I prefer sketching before work because it's the most convenient time for me and my habits. I work as a freelance artist and my schedule is pretty flexible, so potentially I could switch it to a different time of the day. Unfortunately, I always found that if I try to move it after work when I'm tired, it's more likely that I will find excuses and I'll end up not doing it. So my solution was waking up earlier in the morning and do it when I'm fresh. If I ever draw anything at night when I'm tired, it's usually something for fun. I'll probably just doodle some fun art, maybe while watching something on Netflix or YouTube channels that I like. And speaking about YouTube videos, if you're enjoying this video, remember to click the like button. And if you don't, the other button is also there.
Back to the topic, the TLDR is scheduled smartly. Put your practice in a convenient time of the day so that it's less likely that you skip it. But also try to find the right balance between practice and drawing for fun. Try not to burn out yourself because all you do is study, even when you're tired. That's going to consume your passion for art and it could lead you to stop entirely. So times for drawing something that really makes you happy are an absolute must. I'm talking out of experience here. I had some times where all I would do was studying and concentrating on practice and trying to improve. And I didn't set aside time for drawing in a relaxing way. And I had major art blocks for it. So don't repeat my mistakes and take some time to relax. Tip number four, and the one that I consider most important, set things in autopilot and don't rely on willpower. Because willpower is a huge fail. It's like a muscle. If you exercise it a lot, at some point you're gonna be tired and you need to stop. What I did instead was establishing a routine. Same time, same place, same exercise, every day. This way it really became an habit and habits are amazing things. They are something that I don't need to put an effort to keep up. We don't think about it and they can go in autopilot. A lot of studies shows that making good habits help us with productivity. So in my example, my routine works better in the morning, but you can build it out of your own habits and your lifestyle. For some people, it can be a relaxing exercise before going to sleep. For some others, during lunch break, Building a habit can be done in many ways. One, as I already mentioned, is to build a routine like I do in the morning. But some other times you may want to help yourself by associating your new habit with another existing habit, like for example, meals. Some of my colleagues at the last studio I worked, for example, uh, were drawing during lunch breaks. Or you can associate with breaks from other tasks, for example, like a 10, 15 minute breaks, that also works. Or you can do like me and do the same exact exercise. I just changed the reference pictures. This is definitely what won for me and helped me keeping my consistency up and my skills improved a lot for it. Anyway, we are at the end, folks. I hope these tips can help you sketch you more. And if you have some doubts, as always, feel free to leave down a comment below. I'll do my best to reply to as many as I can. Now, if you like my content and you like this video, feel free to like and subscribe and also follow me on my Instagram. You can also check my print shop at the link down below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.